What's happening, guys, and welcome to our weekly Impact Wrestling Podcast. I'm Keith, and I'm joined by Ro. What's going on, man? Not much, Keith. How you doing today? I'm doing all right. You know, I mean, probably the last month or two, we've we've been a little critical of the product. I'm not going to lie. But, you know, this is kind of us saying what we like and what we don't like. There's no uh, there's no agenda there or anything like that. But, uh, you know, last night's episode, I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was they just did a very good job. And, you know, I, I am a little partial to when they head over to Windsor because just the atmosphere, the crowd, it's taped beautifully. There's just so many positive things about being in the, uh, the in Windsor for the company. What do you think? Same thing, man. That was the first thing, like, just even from the crowd and stuff. It's something when they go to Canada, man. Um, and I've always said, like, you know, when they were, you know, closing out 2018, I said, I hope they got Canada back in the plans because... Jay, you know, so many things just go right when they tape in Canada, and this show was no different. Like, I really enjoyed majority of everything. I mean, yeah, I can nitpick a few couple things, but wow. overall, just a great show. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, you know, um, now is this a BCW arena or Destiny Wrestling? I know it's one of Scott Demore's, I would assume, that he utilizes, right? You know, I'm unsure, but I do know when they used to do at times when they would tape outside of Impact, like remember they used to show us those, uh, you know, matches, like say someone competed mm -hmm. in BCW, the presentation was different. So I don't know if it's still the same are arena or it was just different, you know, different, uh, um, you know, uh, tech team uh, uh, that, that are recording the like BCW shows. But I mean, if it is, I mean, like I said, once again, I mean, you know, great arena, um, it looked like it was packed and stuff. So yeah, nice. nice. That's a nice way to start impact. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I don't know if they're planning on running them, this arena again for 2019, but I really, really hope they do. Like I said, they, the crowd always brings it, it. It looks packed. Like the, it's perfectly taped where it's the hard cam is, you know, looking at an entire bleacher of people so it's not like we're facing the stage or anything like that where you know it doesn't look crowded and everything like that but yeah no overall ev everything was was really good about uh the show and presentation um so we open with an x division six man scramble match pd williams versus trey versus idris abraham versus jay chris versus aiden prince versus aced austin uh you know when this match was announced what what was the first thing i told you you said uh, PD was going to win. <laughs> you know, and he did. And, you know, I, I was going to kind of crap on it. And then I thought, you know what? There's no stipulation here. It's just a match. It was a good match. And, you know, it kind of brought back the, the great days of the X Division where you got multi-man matches and everybody's giving it their all. It's fast-paced. And it's just a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, I took it more if it's just a showcase. Um, obviously, they give the hometown guy a win. Um, I was kind of concerned for uh, Jake Chris because that that uh, Canadian uh, destroyer off the turnbuckle, man. I uh, originally I thought he was gonna do where he hops off the turnbuckle and then catch catches him, kind of like how he did to AJ Styles um decade ago. But uh, yeah, that was a sick spot. But yeah, overall, I just kind of took it as a showcase, and if anything, it kind of lets you know. If you if I sit here and told you like, hey, this is the X division. I mean, not a bad crop of guys. You know, I'm um, really high on this Ace Austin guy. Yeah. And I hope they don't, um, you know, for whatever reason, decide like to stop kind of pushing him. <laughs> it, it's but, funny you say that because uh, I don't remember which one of them it was, but commentary made uh, made it a point to say that Impact Management is very high on Ace Austin. So <laughs> that should show you right there. Uh oh well, then yeah. there you go. Yeah, but, but I liked what we saw from Idris Abraham and Aiden Prince too. I, I thought it was just a well laid out match. Yeah, you know the only thing that I I hope down the road, and I kind of thought when they had Rohit Raju competing in it at a time, is they kind of diversify it a little bit because you know you hate to see just the same type of people. You know, people you know doing planches and this and that. But yeah, overall, a nice little showcase, and I think every now and then. I don't want to say, you know, beat into the ground because I remember in the past, I don't know if it was last year or a couple of years ago, where that's the only type of matches we used to get with the X Division. Mm -hmm. You know, we would never kind of get no one-on-one -on -one feuds. And 
No, they've moved away from it. But every now and then, it's good to kind of show us, you know, who's not all only competing in the X division, but, you know, who might be next in line. Right. Absolutely. And it gets, you know, more than two people on TV at a time. Yes. Um, then we had LAX backstage. Conan says they're going to get the Lucha Brothers respect. And he's right now they have to worry about Eli Drake and Eddie Edwards. And then we have Melissa interviewing Taya. She's asking about Jordan getting another opportunity because obviously Jordan won by count out last week. At this point, Madison Rain shows up. Taya says, you know, we thought you got lost in the undead realm, to which Madison Rain says, I was actually in a place much worse. So I guess that was a shot at Ring of Honor. Um, then Jordan comes up and says that she beat Taya and then says that Madison can't come in here and cut in line. Taya makes a match between the two of them and the winner will face Taya at Rebellion. Uh, I really liked Jordan, you know, shooting her shot, saying that, you know, you can't just come in here and cut in line because I think that's what a lot of people uh, felt as well with Madison returning, that that was going to happen. Um, why Ty is able to make this match, I, I don't know. That's a good question. I got a better one for you. Mm -hmm. When If Jordan beat, because la last week's match the uh, that they added against all odds, was that... Did they was that a no contest or they they gave Grace the win via count out? She said it was a count out win. So n normally, in, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, if I we're going by going <laughs> we're going by wrestling logic, she'd probably be entitled to a rematch. But nonetheless, man, hey, give Jordan Grace credit in a in a span of a week, she's gotten three opportunities to get the the knockouts title yeah. I mean, you figure last week uh, and then at united as we stand and then having a number one contenders match so right so you know this was uh something that came up and popped into my head and i was thinking about this you know when gail had you know re was relieved of her duties and because she was going to face tessa why, why didn't they bring madison in and kind of just put her in her spot for the time being well, I'm guessing she was still doing, you know, trying to make something in Ring of Honor. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But, uh, you know, I, I get why they went the route they did for set up, setting up the number one contendership match. Because, you know, Madison does have enough credentials to obviously show that she's a well-established person. And can, uh, you know, it's not like they just threw her in a match with, like, Kiera or somebody else who they haven't built up. So, I get it well, in that sense. Well, but I mean, too, I mean, you could have... <clears throat> if you, if they wanted to do a number one contendership, you could have just done it. And, uh, and maybe they didn't want to double up on having two multi-person matches. Mm -hmm. But to me, that's kind of the best way at times when you have you don't really have a strong person um, to contend. You just kind of do like some type of multi-man match, over the top battle royal. Somebody wins, poof, there you go. Yeah. But uh, but uh, yeah, this is kind of one of the the concerns I had. And, uh, you know, I kind of was speaking about this on the most recent Adam and Roll pod for those who have been checked out. Like, you know, when you have people who depart the company and they want to come back, I'm not one of these people saying they can't come back, but I really just feel they should have to earn their spark back up. They shouldn't be thrusted into a prominent role. And like with Madison Rain being, you know, given the opportunity to compete in a number one contendership match i just kind of just feel like it's a smack in the face even if you want to say like well you know sue young's tied up with this and rosemary tied up with like then you know you do some type of multi-woman match i just think for somebody to leave and then all of a sudden get this opportunity i mean it kind of screams nepotism you know? <laughs> yeah I, I i get your point completely but again you know they haven't done a good a job of building up anybody else outside of uh, a few people. And obviously Sue and Rosemary are doing something together. We saw a little later on. But yeah. All right. Moving on. We had Sammy and Madman Fulton versus Rich Swan and Willie Mack. Uh, this was a good match. Uh, this was Fulton's debut match, I guess, on I Impact. Because I think he was utilized on one of the... Uh, Twitch shows or something like that. But uh, OVE goes over here. Sammy pins Swan after a pile driver. Uh, you know, I really, really like adding or them adding Man Man Fulton to the mix. I think he really does add a lot to OVE. And I, I just hope they become a bigger stable or I should say a more powerful stable than the, what they've been over the last six months or so. Well, I think what's all going to be key is because I guess I don't know if they announced it then I had seen this morning, but I guess 
we're gonna get an uh Swan versus um Callahan for the X Division title at Rebellion. Makes sense. I mean, um, Sammy did pin Swan, you know. Well, I mean, but isn't Johnny Impact the number one contender? Um, I I guess that's one of those things where he can utilize it whenever he wants. It's not necessarily it's like the briefcase, I guess. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that, yeah. I guess that's that's pretty neat. But uh, yeah. If it, it's I think plan. I think it's <laughs> I think it all hinders on what happens between um. If you know if Callan does finally defeat Swan and capture the X Division title, like I'm pretty sure the Madman Fulton, he's gonna be protected because um he's somebody that you know probably further down the road when they you know they probably will take him away from OVE and he'll just kind of do his own thing, mm-hmm. just given his look and presence. But uh, this is one of the the feuds that I've really been digging in Impact, the whole uh, OVE versus Swan stuff. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, the good thing, too, is that, you know, you're bringing a guy like Fulton in, and obviously he's huge and going to be a focal point, but Sammy is still clear in a way the leader of the group. And, mm-hmm. you know, just that being established is always a positive thing, I think. Um, then we had a post-match beatdown, and here comes Tommy Dreamer, chair in hand. Fulton wanted to square off with him, and Sammy kind of pulled him by the dreads and said, no, no, no. Um, so I think they set up a match next week between Dreamer and Fulton. I don't know if it was announced. That'll be good for Fulton, you know, have you your kind of nice, you know, small, small feud. And with Tommy Dreamer, I mean, you know, we can say, you know, he's kind of, you know, been past his prime, but, you know, nice guy to, you know, bounce around for Fulton and Fulton to just destroy. Give him the rub. Hopefully that is, you know. You never know. <laughs> There's always a question mark that comes up with these things, which which we're going to get to later on again. Um, all right, so then uh, backstage, Rolando Menendez meets up with Johnny Impact. Johnny has dealt with him on numerous occasions, obviously frustrated with him at this point. Uh, he then asks Rolando if he wants to get John Stossold. Now, I don't know if anybody knows about this because, you know, this took place over 30, I think 35 years ago. But, um, you know, John Stossel was a uh, reporter. He still is, I believe. Uh, he ended up getting struck by a wrestler, David Schultz, after Stossel had stated that he thought pro wrestling was fake. He ended up suing WWE and getting about 500000 from that. And apparently these were orders from Vince McMahon his, himself for uh, Schultz to attack Stossel. So uh, just a little background information for people who didn't know about the situation. Um, and then Cross walks up. Puts his hand around Rolando and send him and Johnny talk. And Johnny looks at Cross and says, don't worry, you'll get your title shot. So I guess they're trying to set something up there. I guess. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I didn't catch this segment. Um, I just kind of just feel, I, and you know what? I, I mean, I would love to see Cross not only in the title picture, but actually get a run with the belt. But I kind of feel like the ship has sailed, at least at this time. Mm-hmm. I think once they kind of did committed to the Johnny Impact heel turn, I think Cross, it, it just wouldn't make any sense. I thought what they were doing with Cross, from him tossing Taya to, you know, attacking Johnny and all that, like if they wanted to put the belt on Cross, that was a perfect opportunity given the chain of the events. But now, you know, we kind of just see him. It, it just doesn't add up right now. Yeah. No, no, I, I hear you. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't really consider Cross to be necessarily a bad guy. He's kind of just fighting for himself, it seems like. And I think that's always going to be the X factor because you're not sure what he's going to do next. Maybe he's going to turn on Johnny. Who knows, you know? <laughs> so many turns, huh? Well, I, I didn't necessarily mean, you know, heel face turn in that aspect because, like I said, I think Cross is just in it for himself. So, well, I just thought, though, well, at least just in my eyes, I thought, you know, the past few months he was positioned as the top heel up until Johnny turned heel. I guess that's fair. I guess, well, I think it was more the teaming of him and Moose. Yeah, true. But, um, all right, so up next we had a Rascal segment. I guess this took place last week. Um, Trey has sunglasses on. He gets questioned why he's got the glasses on. And Moose ends up walking up. They get all scared. Moose pulls the glasses off uh, Trey to reveal that he has a black eye. 
Moose apparently brought a girl with him to the circle who he calls Melissa, but obviously that isn't her name, which they do that bit a couple times throughout it. Uh, you know, Trey starts to pull up his shirt to show off and Des and Wentz stop him. Uh, they say Moose has invaded their space. And Moose said they they made fun of him. What other choice did he have? So they have a whole back and forth. And then uh, Moose says next week after he kicks Wentz's ass, they're going to party. It, it was just a fun segment. I, I really like the addition of Moose to the things. And uh, they're continuing the thing with the Rascals. Um, I would assume he probably faces both Wentz and uh, Desmond Xavier over the course of the next couple of weeks and then possibly leading up to something at rebellion, maybe a three on one, man, I'd be pulling for that. That'd be so cool. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like, I, I had missed this, but it, just by the sounds of it and what I read, it sounds like it was a nice segment. Now the woman that he brought, I mean, you know, a lot of times when they, um, you know, work these type of angles, it might be like an indie wrestler or something like that. But uh, what I mean, was this anyone, any, uh, anyone know that you knew, or is it was just kind Not of not a extra? clue? Oh, okay. I had no idea. Okay. So, <laughs> it might have been somebody. It's, it's quite possible, but yeah, it could have just been like a local or something like that. Okay. Um, and then we see Rosemary. She's seen in the cemetery. I guess she was reliving everything that took place last week. Um, so I guess uh, Kevin Sullivan is her father. Is that what uh, was said during the segment? It seemed, yeah, that's what I took from it. Yeah. So she was seen visiting Allie's grave. She you know, was talking to her, saying that Kiara and James stuck their nose in their business. And then she says it's time to take matters into her own hands. So I would assume this is going to lead to that Rosemary Sue Young feud, which is fine. And it gives Sue something to do. Um, however, I don't know if everybody else is just going to be... Well, I sh- guess I should say Kiara is going to be pushed into the background. Yeah, I mean, it's go- it's going to be great for Sue. Because, you know, she had not gotten lost and all this stuff. So, I mean, hopefully it's something that they really take their time and build. Like, not something where, you know, they just have one match. Rosemary runs right through and then that's the end. Yeah. Um, as far as Kiara, yeah, I, I don't know what they do with her at this time. I really um, think there's been ample opportunities to put her in a role where it doesn't necessarily have to be where she's next in line. But, you know, she's racking up enough wins where, you know, she, she, you know, in just a matter of time, she will be next in line. Mm-hmm. But there's really no no path for her right now. Yeah. But we'll see if they end up doing something. I mean, you know, I think a big part of the undead realm that was missing was Rosemary just. I don't know, everything feels so genuine with her when she does, you know, segments like this and stuff like that. Yeah, well, it fits her character. And Mm -hmm. I think when you're putting people that it doesn't really go with their character. And then even, too, when, you know, you did the Dark Alley, which, you know, I didn't have a problem with it initially. You know, I thought it was something different. But, you know, once again, we've seen this at times. There's certain people, their personas, like... Like, I've always just thought Allie was going to, like, forever a face, just mm-hmm. at least an impact. So to see her turn all dark just didn't make much sense. But, yeah, nonetheless, I think this fits Rosemary, and it just seemed, that's why it seems so authentic. You can yeah. buy into it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, and then we have Jordan Grace versus Madison Rain, number one contenders match. Winner faces Taya at Rebellion. Um, this was a pretty dominant match for Jordan, which is uh, really the way it was supposed to be. Uh, she picks up the victory after what Josh calls the Grace Driver. Um, what did you think of this match? Yeah, I thought it was good for uh, Jordan Grace just for the simple fact, like, you wonder, you know, who who can she wrestle next? You know, she didn't beat Tessa. Uh, she didn't beat Sue Young. Uh, she beat um, when Allie was still there. Like, she pretty much ran through everyone. So to beat a... Um, former uh champ uh knock uh, multiple knockouts champion yeah i think that's a you know a great win to have underneath her belt yeah. and uh it makes her look strong going into rebellion facing taya yeah absolutely um I-, I think there's a very good chance that they do put the belt onto jordan i mean well it'd be third time is a charm i mean <laughs> you, if you think about it, even at united as we stand um, well, from I didn't watch it, but what I read at the results, I guess she uh, Grace had the pin, and then I think Taya, I don't know, mm-hmm. Taya tossed her aside or something. Yeah, I think she, pin. yeah, she hit the well, the Grace driver on Katie Forbes, and then Taya kicked her and stole the pinfall. 
So we've seen, you know, she's been protected. You know, mm-hmm. she hasn't really been lost. I mean, she's been undefeated uh, in Impact, at least in one-on-one matchups. Yeah. Usually when they protect somebody like this, and going into a title match, more often than not, that person's winning the title. Yeah, and, you know, this is something that I, I just thought about now. And, you know, it, it kind of sucks with things being taped so far in advance, even if it's just a month in time. But you had the United We Stand show, and Taya could have just, you know, had this been a live show, Taya could have been like, she got her chance at United We Stand. There's there's no more title shots, you know, and that would have just been an easy way to do it. Yeah, but then, too, what you would have, would have ran into is, like I said, that count out. See, if they wouldn't have done mm. that, done, done that count out win, like then I, I could see I see what you're talking about. But um I mean, hey, it is what it is. I mean, we we all knew that this was probably the match that was gonna have the at least for not for the knockouts title heading into rebellion. Yeah. And um the way that they had been pushing Grace, I mean, anybody else it wouldn't have made any sense. No. Um and Ty ends up coming out, she attacks Jordan, Jordan gets the upper hand, then Johnny comes out. Uh, and Taya obviously at this point has the upper hand after the distraction by him. Johnny goes up top. He goes for the countdown to impact. Then we hear Brian Cage's music. Cage comes out. Now, as soon as Cage is coming down the ramp, the camera pans to the audience like they were supposed to be super excited. Like, I feel like they used a something that was recorded at a different point in time because mm-hmm. what you know, the people looked all excited and everything. And then when they cut back to Cage in the ring, the crowd was kind of flat. So I think they were kind of trying to push it a little bit. <laughs> and it probably didn't go. Over. I think, you know, maybe people wanted to see if Johnny was going to actually hit a move on Grace. I, I didn't believe he was going to do it. Because, um, you know, you got some who think that, you know, we've seen the past couple of weeks. And even if you want to use United, we stand. I know we've been, uh, we keep referencing it since it just recently happened. Mm-hmm. But obviously, they had the intergender match. So, you know, I think some are, you know, looking to see if this is, you know, some sort of segue for Impact to have intergender wrestling. Right. I, you know, I don't see it happening. I think if they're going to do it, this will be like little bits and pieces. I don't think they'll fully commit. So that was the reason why I didn't think. Um, Johnny's gonna hit the move and I know this is, sets up the mixed tag match I'd be shocked if they if they go by um, or not be shocked if they use the rules like you know in the mixed tags where you know the, the, women, women, face face, the, women. the yeah. women and the men face the men so but yeah um, you, you know he comes down for the save to set that up that should be a great match um, yeah you're talking about the two <laughs> two faces of their respectable you know divisions Heading, you know, facing the two champions of their respectable divisions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and it makes sense. So that that should be a good match, like you said. Um, then we have a Josh Alexander hype video, and then which actually turns out to be Ethan Page watching it on his phone. He's backstage with Alexander. Josh asks what happened to him, and then uh, they're apparently going to be a tag team. Um, I think this was a good call uh, since their tag division has taken a hit. And uh, it's quite depleted, and I think these two guys will bring, you know, much needed, I guess, I don't know, not the Desi Hit Squad to the tag division, like, you know, they'll actually be a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> I mean, they have, when you look at it, I mean, the ta- could the tag division be better? Yeah, but I think it's more of the way they position some of the people, because when we see a lot of the title feuds, it's revolved around the two same teams for these past few months Mm -hmm. i think every now and then even if you rotated you know one or two teams in and have them challenge for it at least it's you know something fresh so while i'm looking forward to seeing what they do because i think this benefits ethan because yeah absolutely you know know, the way where he's been going i just kind of wonder like how they're going to be positioned i mean yeah they can get a few wins but then if they face lax they're going to lose you know they get a title shot like or, or will they even get a title, a tag team title shot? Like, I think that's just always the key. Like, w- with with that, and even the X Division to some extent, like, it's never been a problem of not having enough people to compete, but it's just positioning these people where they, lo- you know, look like um, viable contenders for the tag, you know, tag titles or the X Division title. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that, that is fair. Um, so up next, we have uh, Rohit Raju versus Falaba. So as Fala was making his entrance, commentary makes mention that Fala is here alone. Josh says he usually has a running mate, to which Don replies, yeah, he does. And then all of a sudden that was 
they quickly changed the subject. So um, I'm going to say KM might be done. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of their way to save face. So if something's announced that KM has finished up, well, I mean, I know his uh, contract had expired, but if uh, KM, you know, officially departs or signs somewhere else or, hell, we get an AEW announcement, then that kind of just covers grounds for them. Right, Um, absolutely. The one thing I'll say, and I noticed, and I'm sure you probably noticed too, you know, it seems like Fala has really lost some weight some. Yeah, yeah, no, commentary made that as well. Uh they didn't announce that too. So, and that that's good because I um you know a lot of times we see some of these uh, the heavier set wrestlers, you know um and usually it's of a certain descent whether they're uh, Samoan or sometimes Asian where they kind of um they want to build them all like kind of Yokozuna like mm-hmm. you know kind of do some of the similar moves and Fala you know e- even in this match, uh you know I mean he's always been agile but for him to be losing weight. Um, like that, I, I found myself just thinking, and I mean, I know, and just just follow me here. Oh boy! Like, <laughs> no, no, nothing controversial. <laughs> what I what I was just saying is, you know, we're always talking about men. You know, they really had to do a poor job at times booking some of their faces or making their faces strong. Where you got a guy and follow like super over face. Yeah, and it's just if they took the time to really kind of, it would probably take a lot just for simple fact he's been just sheer comedy up until this point. But if they really took the time and committed to it, you could have a strong, you know, ma- main event baby face. I mean, like I said, it would take some work, but if they commit to it, you could have something because he's super over and mm-hmm. like it's kind of like that organic over, you know what I mean? So I just really just think if they wanted to, or if they were seeking that. You know, they really wanted to commit to that. I don't know how you'd probably be able to do that because, you know, just for simple fact, you know, he doesn't really cut any promos out saying bah. But even if you wanted to tweak it at that point, if they wanted to, mainly is the point I was trying to make. If they were looking for, you know, a super baby face, that's a guy right there. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, it organically happened. I mean, when he came in, what did he come in? Probably about 2017. Yes. Who was he with? Oh, what the hell was his name? Uh, Mario Bo- yes, uh, Bogara. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I when I saw the two guys, I just kind of wrote them off and never expected Fala to end up going this route. And, you know, like you said, be completely over and everything like that. So, um, no, good stuff. Uh, so Ba ends up going for the bonsai drop. This has Gama get up onto the ring apron. Then Raj knocks Fala off. And Rohit pins him with his feet on the ropes. And... Rohit gets a win. <laughs> you know, I, I did think, you know, the one thing and just kind of like when I seen with him lose, you know, with the with the weight loss, I did think it would have been better if they would have had, you know, Rohit like toss him or something because I just kind of took this as kind of like, you know, we, we've seen this happen before where it's like he's, you know, they're playing off. He's too big and mm-hmm. and, you know, he can't hold his balance. But, you know, I kind of just wish they would have, you know, done something. Like I said, you could have had some kind of power bomb off. It would have made more sense. But I I got you. But, you know, in the same aspect, it took three people basically to get the win over with Rohit cheating, too. So, you know, it kind of it doesn't make Fala look bad at all. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and it gives Rohit a. Is this well? I think he's probably won on explosion before, but and yeah, like you said, he used his feet on the ropes, but yeah, he finally gets to win. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then this brings Scarlet out, she ends up distracting both Raj and Rohit. Then Falaba takes both of them out. Um, yeah, I, I, I love the pairing of Scarlet and Falaba, I, I think it'll just work so well for both of them. I don't know yeah. how you feel. Well, what I, what I guess what I'm confused about is pairing and are they going to be like, is she going to be uh, managing him or are they going to be a team, a tag team? Well, I'm not completely sure of that yet, but if they do go the route of her managing him, I think that would do wonders. Cause like you said, him just saying, bah, I mean, she could be used as his mouthpiece, so to speak. You know, that, that would, that would be great. Um, yeah, because when she came out, I was uh, like, okay, is, are we going to see some follow-up since, you know, she defeated uh, Disco? Mm-hmm. And, I mean, she didn't really strike them. She did the, the what, stink face. And yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> I'm sure they weren't complaining about taking <laughs> that. So, um, yeah, you know what, if they went that route, and 
you know, while I, I kind of would love to see her compete in the knockouts division, you know, only because, you know, we look at the division right now and it just seems so thin at this moment and she'd be a great addition. Yeah, I would love the pairing if she was assisting him. Like I said, if they really wanted to, you know, really start trying to push ball and try to move him up the card, that'd be a perfect way and she can manage him just for the time being, you know. Right, right, exactly. And like you said, this. I think if she was in the knockouts, she may not end up in the spotlight. I mean, you already have the knockouts title feud. You already have Tessa and Gail. There's only so much you can book on TV in a two-hour weekly show. So, you know, if she's on TV, that that is the important thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Rosemary and Sue, too. Yeah. And then we have another tag team coming to Impact. Apparently, the Deaners have a contract. They both signed it. They had a little entertaining video. Um, you know, very interesting that they had another tag team showcase. Uh, like I said, I think Fala and KM are done. So that is one. And then, you know, I, I think the Eli and Eddie thing is only going to be short-lived. I don't see them sticking together as a tag team. So you kind of remove those two from... Those two teams from the equation, you have two more waiting in the wings. But it'll be interesting to see what they do with them. But I I think the characters are good, what we we saw. I mean, I know you didn't get to see this. Yeah, well, what's their characters like? Uh, Some sort of rednecks. (laughs) I mean, did they come across as faces or heels? Uh, I would say faces. Okay. But, you know, that could change very quickly. (laughs) <laughs> you know once again like i said you know because even too we forget ove and i know the way that oh yeah <laughs> uh, they, they've they've been used at times uh, well the chris brothers i should say but you know it's just going to be just a matter of you know being able to put some of these teams in mixing it up like you can't revolve the whole the whole division can't just revolve around one team and that's yeah. what we've seen unfortunately whether lax are champions or they're ta- chasing the titles mm-hmm. and you know everyone else just seems like a notch below you got to be able to you know thrust you know these teams in and you know give them a shot so you know they can add a whole bunch of teams but if it's just the same people challenging for the titles it doesn't you know really mean much yeah, but I'm not sure if the writing's on the wall that, you know, all these AEW uh, rumors could possibly be true. Wait, which ones are you referring to? Uh, Lucha Brothers being exclusive there, LAX leaving. Oh, oh wow. I didn't yeah. even, I forgot about what the LAX one. I mean, you know, it's obviously just a rumor, but you never you know, know. Yeah, I think just with the AEW thing, I think we're going to see a lot of wait and see approach with people because i think they're good i think the first thing is i think a lot um people are waiting to see what's this tv deal gonna be like you know they keep teasing it and i worry about that with them because if you don't knock it out of the park it then you know all of a sudden you know because already the buzz that they have i mean you know it's still there but nothing compared to a couple months ago no no and i think it's just kind of just like a wait and see so you know people are going to be looking into the double or nothing and then see what type of announcement then so but yeah you know if that's the case that's smart thinking down the road where that way if both teams were to depart you know, you at least got some other teams, but then too, right. you got to put put these teams in a position where, you know, there's not that big of a fall, uh, yeah. a drop off. You right. know, so. But that's all in building, you know. Yeah. Rascal and too, I, we forgot we forgot yes, about it too. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and I think the Deaners, are, I'm I know of them. I'm not too too familiar with them, but I think it's another like uh, Josh Alexander story where they were guys that have, you know, wrestled the Indies their entire careers, and this is Impact giving them a chance. Well, Dina was in Impact before. Um, was it him or Eric Young? That was one of them. They had won the Knockouts title. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, I forgot which one. Which one it was? It was one of them. I, I think Dina was uh, tied to o- ODB. Mm, oh, okay. Yeah, he was there there a while back. But yeah, but yeah, I think they're mainly journeymen. That's that's kind of the thing. But yeah, no these these are signings like. Like we've said with the Josh Alexander signings, definitely one's impact should be should be making. I agree. Yeah. And then we take a look at Gail Kim's career, a.k.a. I fast forwarded. Um, and then we have Melissa interviewing Tessa. Tessa's asked how it is to face a legend at Rebellion, which Tessa responds and says, Gail was the best of her era. But 
the bar was set pretty low back then. And she says, these knockouts seem to be coming out of the woodwork to relive their glory days. Madison Rain found out earlier that it isn't that easy. And uh, so she, they did, I think it was Melissa that made this, that Gail Kim is from Toronto, which Rebellion will be play, taking place in Toronto. So, yeah. And uh, Tessa says, Gail is nothing more than a fraud. So, you know, it, it's kind of good for them to be self-aware of these things with the uh, older you know, competitors coming back and trying to rel relive their glory days in that aspect of it, how it actually plays out. Well, that'll be a different story. Yeah. I mean, you know, now that you, you know, you mentioned, I forget that rebellion is going to be in Canada and mm. that's where Gail's from. So she's going to be the hometown, <laughs> hometown favorite. So, you know, yeah, we just have to wait and see. <laughs> oh boy. You sound so confident. Well, it did too, you know. <laughs> she says set the bar low. Um, yeah, I mean, she did recently have a match, you know, with a certain competitor that some may or may not be fond of. Um, I don't know if you consider that lowering the bar itself, but it, that's right in this day and age now, <laughs> <laughs> right? But uh, um, yeah, it, it's just gonna really be in, it's gonna really be interesting how it plays out. Um, I understand, you know, this kind of gives Tessa something to do, and then you mm. can always put her back in the title picture. I just, yeah, I, I just, I kind of hope that the way the match is laid out and, you know, the decision is the right one. Yeah. And, you know, just a heel making good points. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have the main event, Eli Drake and Eddie Edwards versus LAX. Um, this match was great. I really enjoyed this. And this was a number one contenders match? Now, it didn't, I don't think it was announced because they made it very clear that LAX would be facing the Lucha Brothers at Rebellion, and I thought that was for the titles, but did they ever actually make that official? You know, I had just was looking at the uh, reports, I think they had said it was number one. I mean, I don't know. Um, obviously, given what, you know, a lot of us kind of feel with as far as Eli's status, um, I could see why they're going with. Uh, Lucha Brothers versus LAX again mm -hmm. um, But yeah man I, I, I really enjoyed this and I kind of just Felt like you know damn if we Didn't feel that Eli was gonna leave in, You know Towards the end of next month like I'd really Like to see what a run of Eli and Eddie could be like like Just for the simple fact that they're the way That they uh, finish their matches is You know referee distraction Eli hits, some, uh, hits the opponent With a kendo stick mm -hmm. and then uh, Eddie capitalizes like I, I just think that's kind of um it kind of brings me back to the whole uh Los Guerreros a little bit mm -hmm. where they used to cheat to win um that's it but I mean it was over so that that was the thing that I was just thinking but yeah I I really enjoyed this pairing and it's just kind of unfortunate I think as a fan you know we you know the writing is on the wall we don't get that feeling that though capture tag team gold just given that eli status yeah uh we had a really good spot before the match started uh eli and conan were getting into it and the ref ends up throwing conan out so it was two on two um finish was lax setting up for the street sweeper lucha brothers come out they distract santana he was on the top rope so he takes lucha brothers out on the outside eli hits ortiz with the kendo stick and then eddie hits the boston knee party for the win uh, after the match the lucha brothers take out lax bring the table in the ring and penta powerbomb santana through the table off the top rope so i, I mean I, I would assume that the lucha brothers are the heels in this situation what would you uh agree with that yeah, I be, I think what they did, because with that rumor that you had mentioned earlier about them potentially being exclusive to AEW, this is their way of, like, if that is true, then, you know, you want, the, you know, the Hills to lose at Rebellion. So it, it makes all the sense in the world, because we see with LAX now, you know, as of late, they haven't really been doing anything that makes them seem like hills they were just saying hey we demand respect i mean right. that ain't something really a hill does and you know to have the faces come out and distract <laughs> distract a team and then yeah. you know, go and attack after and then they were even kind of uh, taunting uh, eli and eddie you know mm -hmm. like you know if you guys come for this is what happens next so they turned them without them doing anything drastically right, right. 
sometimes that's the best thing to do. You don't necessarily have to explain like, you know, they go do, you know, hit a low blow or do something of that magnitude. So um, good call on impact by doing this and recognizing that. Yeah. Um, also, you know, I think commentary did a good job of putting all four individuals over in the match, just stating that, you know, LAX was the, <clears throat> the longest reigning, ta- you know, tag champions and Eli and Eddie, both former world champions. So I think, you know, the four men squaring off the way it took place very even makes sense in that aspect. Yeah, what a great tag tag team match to yeah. cl- uh, close out the show. Yeah, close out a really good show. And, uh, it's, you know, it's nice to, to feel that way after an episode. I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that's the thing, you know, um, I wish I could, well, I'm not gonna say I wish, but I mean, there's some people, you know, they, I mean, you would never know what a bad episode was. Um, you know, everything seems great. And, and it's all opinion. You know, yep. some of us, we watch, and, you know, there's certain things we like, certain things we don't like. And, but yeah, no, it does just feel good. Um, just, you know, after last week, because that, like I said, I, you know, I do enjoy impact. And for the most part, there's, you know, bits and pieces of things that I like. And obviously there's going to be things I don't like, but, you know, to watch a whole show and not like anything is just like, you know, you know, why did I even watch it? And then to watch this week um, and it be like a complete 360 degrees, it's it's a refreshing. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I wasn't as down on last week's episode as you were, but I, I get it. Um, <laughs> and it, it seemed like a lot of people were kind of on the same page with us as far as the LAX and Lucha Brothers, you know, being dragged on for so long. So we still have a couple more weeks. We'll see how that goes. And then... Hopefully, Rebellion is the blow-off match, so we can move on from there. Um, so, RVD has, I guess, officially signed with Impact. Uh, wh- what are you feeling here, man? Of his, If his performance is any indication of how he can go in the ring, um, not too good. Um, from United We Stand, that is. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's just not in ring shape. So maybe it's like a, a physical thing. So if that's the case, okay. But I do kind of lean towards maybe it's the age aspect. Um, yeah, I, I really thought some of these people who competed on United as we stand were, you know, there was a possibility that they would be signing on. Mm-hmm. Um, RVD kind of being one of them, given his relationship. Well, you you actually did. I can't take credit for it. You had mentioned it. But given his relationship with Don, and we kind of see now Don's kind of a... Uh, bringing in his buddies. Yeah, bringing in his old ECW crew. Um, you know, Obviously, we know that Lance Storm uh, has been playing a role at the, the Canada tapings, you know, mm-hmm. former ECW alumni. Yep. Um, yeah, I just don't know. I'm, I'm, my guess is they're going to probably put him in the main event scene. Because I don't think he could probably hang given this age in the uh, X Division. But uh, yeah, I, you know, hopefully what we saw are, you know, the highlights that we've seen at United as we stand. Hopefully that was just kind of just a, a one off thing. And, you know, when he comes to Impact, he'll, you know, be able to put on a better, better performance. Yeah. No, no, no. I agree with you there. And it's all going to be how he's utilized if he's brought in to put over younger talent, like, you know. We would hope he would be brought in to be used. Um, that would be good. However, I, I tend to agree with you. I think there is a good possibility he is pushed into the main event picture, or at least the upper card, and um, there's still a possibility the title ends up on him. Yeah, I think, too, I could see it throwing a wrench into the plans. I know we joke about the coronation of Cage, but, I mean... If they wanted to, you know, they they would love to do a Johnny Impact versus RVD. Now you could say, well, maybe they do it for the X Division title. You know, assuming Johnny wins the X Division title, mm-hmm. but like I said, I just don't get that impression that RVD can work that style, you know, anymore. So uh, um, yeah, we just got to see how it plays out. Um, obviously, we're not going to see him till what probably post rebellion. I think he's supposed to be at the taping after the night after rebellion yeah i mean i I think there might there's a strong possibility he appears at rebellion you know maybe just kind of interruption or something of that nature um 
but yeah, I I really want to see how he's used, but I could see them using him in the main event as that quote unquote veteran. Yeah. Yeah. But again, to put over the talent. <laughs> um but yeah, no, that'll be interesting to see. He still definitely has some name value because there has been a decent amount of buzz from him being brought in. So at that aspect of it is very good. Um but yeah, no, it's a wait and see approach, like many things. Um, another thing I wanted to bring up, and we saw it yesterday, is uh, Eli Drake was interviewed by 411 Mania. I think that's their website, right? Yeah. yeah. 411 um, Wrestling. Yeah, yeah. Um, and apparently he has made his decision what he is going to do when his contract expires in May. Um, obviously, he did not let us know what's going to happen, but he knows what he was he is going to do which when he was on the wrestling perspective podcast he seemed like he was unsure at that point but uh it seems like his mind is made up so uh it'll be interesting to see and it is interesting to know that he is a he has what a six-figure deal i guess with impact it, well, or at least at one is. point he was yeah that's what i think in 2015 i don't think that's a reflection of what he had signed last year I think yeah. like that that deal when he had resigned last year, he was uh, uh, re-upping from the deal that he had previous in 2015. Yeah, but uh, no, it was a good interview. Definitely worth checking out. Um, he has been, uh, I guess, he's been uh, making some statements that have been rubbing people the wrong way as far as intergender wrestling. Uh, you and I have kind of given our thoughts on the whole thing. A couple weeks back, so we kind of stand on the same page as Eli. But uh, yeah, it's it seems like he's uh, rubbed a lot of his uh, coworkers the wrong way. You know where I, the impression that I get too, it's kind of like if you're not if you're not a fan of intergender wrestling, and then you know you voice why what you don't like, you're not putting the people down who compete in it, but you're just stating why you're not a fan of it. You're just this terrible person, or right. you know you think women wrestling like no, like the points that you're making, you know, like you just, you mentioned, like we kind of share those same points, and people always want to use the Ray Mysterio example. If you think about it, Rey Mysterio didn't always face, you know, Big Show, Kevin Nash. It was like a one-off matches. And the mm-hmm. way they were booked, and I think in the event of where he beat Kevin Nash, he won by the skin of his teeth. He wasn't doing no suplexes or anything like that. It was it was like a true underdog type, yeah. type of match. So, you know, and then they say with The Undertaker, I mean, that's more of his gimmick is like that. And... The one thing, and I think someone had tweeted this out to him, and which I agree, like, I think intergender wrestling works, like, if you're putting the women in having them face cruiser weights, because at least you can buy into kind of similar size and stature, like, where he, where he, where he got so much flack for was because there was a picture of Jordan Grace and, and uh, st- yeah, staring down, and what he was saying, a five foot three chick shouldn't be able to um, beat a six four, six foot four guy. And, you know, people, you know, of course, in a believable sense. Yeah. Yeah. And she, you know, she got upset and, you know, Tessa, you know, all all the women start trashing him and stuff, you know, like it was out the window at this point, you know, in in. It, and like it, it just it just it just it just led me to believe like it's just kind of like either you like it or you're terrible for not liking it. Clearly impact. I and, and even though I know we we had thought like maybe they'd flirt with it. I don't believe they're 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 gonna entertain it. Just like when WWE in the Rumble they had uh, Nia eating those finishers, they're they're not gonna entertain it. I think when you have a strong women's division, the stuff's not needed. I mean, we see women's wrestling. You know, you got three women main eventing the biggest pay per view of then in you know wrestling. Like it's taken such a big leap. Like I don't think. Like, I understand, you know, in some aspects of it all, but I don't think it's needed. Like, I think, you know, you having a strong woman facing some male, beating them, like, it do, it don't do anything. I think, if anything, having a woman, you know, main event to show, defending the tight, you know, the women's title, respectively, or, you know, whatever championship they have in their division, I think that does more than enough. So, I, so. I, just, I just think it's just crazy that, like, how, you know, for the folks who don't like it, and like I said, I never kind of get the impression that he's trashing it he's just explaining his reasoning for not liking it because people do ask well what is it you don't like about it 
And he makes fair points. He's not attacking the women. He puts them over as being great. But then I just think people, and we kind of see in this, this society, you either agree or um, you're criticized for disagreeing. Yep. Can't have your own opinion. <laughs> that's, kind of, that's kind of how it is, man. Yeah, definitely. Um, but, yeah. Anything else to add? I don't know. Yeah, we were talking about this just on a, a different note. Um, I think we were, and I brought this up to you during the week, and I said we can discuss it, and you know maybe open up some discussion. Like when you think about with uh, even then TNA, like do you ever wonder where they got the bad reputation from? Like in you know I was sharing like where I felt uh, TNA slash Impact got a raw deal was. It was never the in-ring product that was bad. I mean, yeah, you know, angle here or there, yeah, okay. But overall, the product has always f- been flawless, at least in my eyes. Like, well, but until this point, I should say. But for, for the for the majority, okay, let's say that. But I do feel a lot of the backstage stuff, you know, whether it was politics talent and not, all that. Yeah, and talent not getting paid. Like, I felt like people took that and that brought put you know had them down on impact or you know tna and to me i thought that was unfair because while that stuff yeah you hate to hear that stuff it didn't affect the in-ring product like the you know normally when you have stuff like that that happens in a company as such like it'll trickle down and affect everything like yeah the backstage dysfunction was there but you know they were still putting on pay-per-views and Mm -hmm. you know still getting good ratings still on tv you know like everything was was fine in that aspect and i just kind of just wonder like why was it that some or at least it seemed like why some allowed stuff to happen back backstage to for them to kind of uh, um you know deter them from tuning in yeah no no, no I, I get that i mean there probably were instances where things happen backstage like you know people depart and things not happening that did screw up the show but um no we've we've kind of seen that recently it's you know because the perception has turned around you know we saw videos of the locker room breaking out in song and stuff like that over um the last set of tapings in canada and people are like you know the locker room's great why aren't people tuning in and it seems like it's like the opposite of what was happening now like, like you said, people were tuning out because of what was going on. But now that everything's good backstage, people aren't tuning back in. Well, I just felt like that reputation, because anytime you see, and I know a lot of times it's like troll stuff, obviously. But I feel like that reputation, it just, it, and you know, it leads me to believe too. I think people, like a lot, a lot of times people, they're loyal to one brand and they'll check out other ones. And what they'll do, it's easy for them to nitpick this other brand just because it's not their favorite you know, whereas if their favorite does similar things, you know, they're able to, you know, turn a blind eye and a deaf ear. So I just kind of just feel like with Impact, like once that stuff was released and I always thought too, you know, one of their one of the faults of the company is like, I don't know if they had a mole or something like that, but there were it was stuff that was being released. And I'm like, why can't they keep this stuff under wraps? Mm-hmm. It's no different than from like a team at times, and we see this in sports teams. I, I use the Knicks for example. Like a lot of their uh, um, management stuff, like it gets leaked out, and then you know it changes fans' perception. Now I know the team isn't the greatest, you know, oh, boy, at, this, no. <laughs> at this point, but I'm just saying, like I, I guess for me, I've always been able to separate what happens backstage at, you know to what i see in the ring and i just kind of always thought you know during those times like the product was fine it was just what was going on backstage and then you know you fast forward now and you know in part now too i think you know, and we, we both shared at times like you know it's the product has really kind of you know dropped some but well. it, but as far as like you know obviously you know, access and everything like that and you know the times that it is good but it's like that reputation of what happened backstage i just don't get why stuff that happened backstage is a reason to turn folks off if it didn't affect the in-ring product that much yeah no i agree and you know that was one of the things that drew me in to tna was they were willing to take chances on things you know even if it was not the greatest they took a chance with things and i think at this day and age we that's what some of us are craving is just to take a chance and everyone plays such a safe game now yeah you have to i mean i i think too um in 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 some you know 
people are just looking at who's going to draw. I think there's nothing wrong with trying something. And if it doesn't work, because we've seen this happen in wrestling, even we've seen an impact recently, I'd say the last time. Remember they put the belt on Pentagon, and then a couple weeks later they took it off of him? Yep. Because it, it probably didn't go over as they anticipated. Like, you do that, hey, all right, that didn't work, and then reset. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. And I think more often than not, people welcome, you know, the change. Like, I know to me, at when that happened at um, – Dem- yeah, Red- I believe it's Redemption. Like, I was like, what yeah. the hell? I mean, I didn't know who Pentagon was, you know, originally. But I'm like, they put the boat on somebody who's not even a part of the company? Like, how's this going to play out? And, well, yeah. I, I was going to say, I think that was one of the things, too, because that seemed to many people that that was such a TNA move to do. Yeah, you know, I I, I guess. I mean, I, I guess I didn't look at it like that. I thought... You know, the typical TNA move is WWE guy comes in, wins the title his first night, kind of like what they did when they brought Austin Aries back. Well, I mean, Pentagon <laughs> made his name elsewhere, you know? It's it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, but I guess at least the thing was is it seemed like there was some sort of partnership. So, I mean, it looked like where we were leading to, or at least what I thought it was, you know, Pentagon wins our title. Maybe one of the guy people that we have competing in Impact goes and wins a Lucha Underground title, brings it right. to Impact, and we kind of see, you know, see that similar to remember when Eddie won the uh, GHC the GHC title yeah. and then mm-hmm. in return Ishimori won the uh, X Division title. Right, right, yeah, no, that made sense, and that's how we were utilizing our partners. It seems like it's kind of transitioned away from that now i know it seems more so now the partnerships are mainly used for for, uh to make have venues more so than anything yeah but But yeah that's that's all i had (laughs) yeah yeah no oh i mean you know like we said it was a good show there's not much bad to talk about in that aspect and you know when there's things we don't like we seem to uh harp on them a little longer than we probably should <laughs> <laughs> that's being a fan right yeah it's true it's true we like what we like and we don't like what we don't like and plain and simple so uh i guess that's all for this week then man yeah unless you got anything else i do not um you have another adam and rose show coming up this weekend or next week or whatever yeah, I think we should be recording something tomorrow. Um, just uh, check it out, the la- the lounge, or you can follow me on Twitter, rtgray underscore. Um, I'll be tweeting that out as well as <laughs> tweeting this out yep. like you do. Yep. Um, but yeah. All right. Sounds good. Thank you for joining me once again. Guys, I hope you enjoyed our podcast. We will see you back here next week. And until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.